show you how to get a chippy farmhouse look on a builder's grade door using one step paint and cracked patina. But before we begin, don't forget to tag three friends down in the comments below and share this link to your page for a chance to win a container of cracked patina. So to create this look, I'm using several items. English Walnut Gel Stain, Windsor Gray Gel Stain, Color of the Month Never Skipped Brunch, One Steps, Molly Yellow, Vintage Affliction, Linen, and Lulu, followed by Cracked Patina, and of course, numerous chippy brushes. After I sanded and cleaned my piece, I then stained it with Windsor Gray and English Walnut. To show age and wear, I was sporadic with placement of my Windsor Gray and English Walnut. As you can see, some areas are darker with my Windsor Gray, and then some areas are lighter with my English Walnut. The first color to our layers is Color of the Month Never Skip Brunch. So we will lightly cover our stained area. I'm not gonna lay this too thick because I wanna be able to get some of the grain to come through. I'll add a little bit of water to stretch and thin the paint. Once this dries, we'll come back with our next layer. I'm going to lightly layer these colors. I am not going to add too much paint. I want it to be relatively thin and go along with the grain. Make sure to feather your paint along the grain. Chippy Brushes and I have a love-hate relationship. I get these things everywhere. And a trick to when you mess up your paint, if you just spray a little bit of water and then feather out where you removed a bristle from, you'll never notice. Now we can add our second complementing color. Now, it's okay that they blend together. Now, as we add our second complementing color, We're just gonna lay it on. These do not have to be put in any particular way, just any way it looks good to you. But remember to feather out your paint because you don't want it to be too thick. You want these layers to be able to show through. Now that our second layer is dry, it's time to add our cracked patina. Now I always use two separate cups. In this cup, I've added warm water and I've already added some cracked patina. As you can see, it's kind of like a coffee, like milk and coffee color. It helps thin out the cracked patina so we can get some fine lines. But then I'm gonna use my cracked patina just straight and as you see it comes out pretty thick and a definite caramel color. This is, craft patina is thick just like, um, you know Halloween with um, 
candied apples, that's exactly what it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of the thinner cracked patina in some areas and then some of the thicker cracked patina in other areas while I want larger cracks. And when you do this, you want to just go over one stroke and that's it. You do not want to go back over where you've already put the patina because you will pull the paint off. So try to be methodical and to have some patience when doing this because you don't want to pull your paint off too soon. So like I said, we're gonna add some thinner patina in some areas and then come back and add some thicker patina where we want the thicker cracks and the more of the aged look. Now you'll know that your piece is fully covered because cracked patina will leave a shine. So you will know if you have any dull spots you know that you've missed an area. Now with your cracked patina, you do not want any puddles because cracked patina never fully dries. Now in some of the areas where I've gone heavier and it looks like there may be a puddle, I just gently take my brush and dab it to break up that puddle. Now that our patina has come to tack, and by tack meaning it pulls your skin just a little, we're gonna add our next layer of colors. Now we're gonna add these sporadic just like we did our second layer. And with adding your paint to the cracked patina, you wanna make one pass. You don't wanna come back because when you come back, you're gonna pull off your paint. So let me show you. We're just going to gently lay our paint in the areas that we want this color. Now as our paint starts to dry, you'll start to see the cracks start to form. So the smaller cracks is where the thinner patina was and then our larger cracks are where the thicker patina was. Now that we've had a little bit of dry time, I wanna come back and remove some of the paint. I'm gonna do that with some trippy brushes, but as we can see, some of the parts are still wet. We need to let those dry, but where it's thinner, I wanna go ahead and start to agitate those. So what I'll do, as I will just kind of pull and drag to get these spaces. And the placement is random. It's what you like, it's what you want. Now to remove some extra I'm just going to use my hands. Now this part is going to be extremely messy, so make sure to have plenty of paper towels nearby, preferably with some clean slate or something to help remove some of the excess.
Now that our paint has dried, I'm going to take some 120 grit sandpaper with my one of my sanding blocks and take off some of the peaks and rough edges. And when you do this, you just want to be gentle, but at the same time, try to get a smooth surface as best you can. Now, even though I'm taking off some of the rough edges, I'm going to distress a little more like I did here to show some of the wood grain. A little tip as you're sanding, use your shop vac to come back around to collect the dust that remains so you can see how much you have sanded off, but to also get ready to clean your piece so you can wax and seal. Now that our door is sanded and distressed, we're ready to add Mind Your Own Beeswax. Now this is a buttery wax. It goes on super smooth with the rag. This is actually my favorite sealant for my pieces. Because as you can see, it goes, I mean, it goes on just like butter. It's wonderful. And as we're doing this, you can see our colors start to pop. Now, even though we sanded and distressed our piece, as you can hear the rag going over, it is completely smooth, but we still have the texture and the depth that we were going for. Once we get the whole door sealed, we can then wait about 15 minutes to a half hour and then we can come back and add some dust of ages. For me, the best way to apply the beeswax is with a lint-free rag. That way I can get into all the cracks and crevices and know that every area is sealed. So as you're applying your beeswax, you can tell your colors go from a mute and matte color to a shiny, bright color. Now with our wax almost dry, we're going to buff with a lint-free rag. Now because we want to add the dust of ages. The wax is almost dry, but not completely. So now we'll take our dust of ages and a chippy brush. We'll simply place our brush in the dust knock off the excess and pat into the corners where we want to add texture, add some depth, I'll lightly place it over some of the cracks. I don't want to do too much, just a lot. Once we do, come back and get into those cracks.
So that's it. It's that easy. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments, and I'll circle back to answer any questions you might have. So if you've stuck around this long, thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.